Last week, we looked at the Open Plan Book service that you can also integrate inside Home Assistant, plus a various other hex components. One of the components that we looked at is the plant monitoring integration for Home Assistant, but not the internal one. No, we looked at the HEX or HACS version of the same component. Today, we are going to continue with the plant monitoring integration and see how you can add new devices and not just import the existing ones. But we will also talk about the various plant sensors that you can use, that I use, and that are also available on the market. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Since we covered that part in the previous video, I will not be talking about the Home Assistant plant monitoring integration on how you can install it, because it's currently still not available directly from Hex or Home Assistant. No, you have to add it as a custom repository, but that's an easy thing to do. For all of you that missed the previous video, and you really should see it, I will be linking it up here. But in that video, we talked on how you can import from the original or internal plant monitoring integration in Home Assistant sensors into the new version of plant monitoring from HEX. What we didn't cover is how you can add the new sensors or new plants inside Home Assistant. If you haven't previously installed any plant monitoring sensors via the YAML in Home Assistant and you already have restarted your system after installing plant monitoring HEX component, what you need to do to add the components inside is click on Add Integration, type in Plant and select Plant Monitor. In this window, you will now need to fill in all the data from all of the sensors for plants that you already have. You need to first specify the name of the plant. If you do not know the name of the plant, you can either use, if you've already set it up, Open Plant Book Integration inside Home Assistant and do search there, or you can go to Open Plant Book website and do search there. Let's click on Browse Database, type in Dipsys, and we'll search Public Plants. We have two plants, one is Dipsys Decari and the other one is Dipsys Lutescens. This is the actual plant that I have. You can look at the details for each of the plants to make sure that this is the correct plant. For example, let's click this one here. We will present it with the image of the plant, scientific name, common name, category, and both minimum and maximum values for each of the categories. For example, for the air humidity, soil moisture, air temperature, lux, etc. If you do not use Open Plan Book, and I really do recommend that you really use Open Plan Book because all of this data will be automatically pulled in Home Assistant. Yes, but you don't need it. You can just copy the name of the plant. In my case, this is this one because it's not a tree, it's inside the plant pot. Copy it and then paste it as a plant name here. But what we do need to do now is select temperature, soil, conductivity, illuminance, air, air humidity sensor. Remember that not all plant sensors have all of those values. But if, for example, you have plants inside your living room and you already have sensors there, for example, for the HVAC, you can use values from that sensor. And that's exactly what we'll be doing here today. For the temperature sensor, I will search for grow and I will be using grow cube sensor because this plant, same as one other plant, is hooked to GrowCube, and GrowCube measures just a couple of things. But it measures the air temperature, air humidity, and we also have soil moisture. For the soil measurement, I will select moisture B. Conductivity, I do not have. Illuminance sensor, I will select one other sensor that is also in the room where this device is. Living room motion illuminance, this is the Akara motion sensor. And for the air humidity, we will once again use GrowCube. Let's click Submit. If you do not have plant book integration and you want to add values by hand, you can do so. I will quickly populate the data by using data from the Open Plant Book website. I've filled in all the data from the database, customized to this plant, and I will click Submit. We'll add area and finish. And this is the new plant. The plant is in the state OK. Air humidity is OK, we do not have conductivity information, and the lux illuminance is more or less OK, soil moisture is within the limit, and temperature is also OK. These are all pre-configured values, and if you want to reload data from the database, for example, once every couple of months to make sure that all the data is OK, 
click on configure, enable force refresh data from open plan book and click submit. Also, if you didn't watch the previous video, which you really should, if you want, you can untick some of the boxes here. For example, if you do not have the conductivity sensor or you don't want to be triggered for the conductivity, in my case, that can be air humidity, you can untick those boxes and you will not get notified if the values go above or below certain thresholds. Click on submit. And now you have everything to add this to Home Assistant by using whatever means you want. I would still recommend that you go with the flower card, once again, the HACS or HAX component that I've also showcased in the previous video. If we compare this integration, plant monitoring HAX integration with the original plant integration for Home Assistant, there are a lot of differences. They are both similar in terms of what they do, but they are also a bit different. For example, this is how the plant integration in YAML looks in Home Assistant. We have the name of the plant, then we define sensors. They are moisture, battery, temperature, conductivity and brightness. After that, you want to define maximum and minimum values for all of those sensors. For example, for moisture, I want to get notified or the plant should get in a problem state if the moisture is below 30 and above 75% or in terms of battery when it drops to 10%. Also, there is something called check days. This allows you to have a median value across three days. Maybe you have rainy day and you do not want to get notified if the plant didn't receive enough sun or daylight that day. And by using these check days, for a period of, for example, two, three, five, seven days, you will get value that is median for that period and you will not get a problem or triggered state. The question is now what you can do with all of this in Home Assistant. Well, actually you can create a very simple automations or complex. I will not be going into templating in this video. You can try that on your own. Instead, we'll be creating one simple sensor and this sensor will notify us if there is a problem with the plant. We will create trigger for the entity state, dipsis, when it changes from OK to problem and it's in that state for, for example, 15 minutes, we want this to be triggered. And in action, for example, let's use notification, create a persistent notification, title will be plant has issues. And in message, we can say that plant, whatever plant has triggered this, has issues. And this is how it could potentially look. In this case, we are creating a persistent notification, plant has issues, messages dipsis is in, and it will read the state or write the state, state. So it would be either dipsis is in okay state, which it would not because of the trigger, or it would be dipsis is in the problem state. You can of course further customize it Instead of using trigger and then the name of the plant, you can use template so that each plant falls in this category. And as soon as any plant enters in the problem state, it would send notification with the plant name and also potentially the attribute from that plant telling that, for example, the soil moisture is too low. But now let's look at the various options you have and some of the ones that I've tested so far. I'll start with the first board I've tested and that is the Liligo. TTGO HIGRO 32 board. The link to it will be down in the video description. This is more or less DIY project. That means that you have to source the board itself. It is already assembled, so no assembly is needed. Then you need to figure out the battery. I use the LiPo batteries that I bought from the AliExpress. And you also need to either buy the case or print the case. As shown here, you can buy the kit, which includes the battery, board, and also printed ABS case. I did print the case from PLA and also ABS. If you want to use it in a harsh environment of a lot of humidity, sun, etc., I would really recommend that you go with the ABS or PLA. Although I do still have some boards that have cases that were printed in PLA three or four years ago. The problem with this board is that this is the ESP32 board. If you search for it on AliExpress and not use the link that I provided down in the video description, you can see that there are a couple of versions or iterations of the board. I would recommend for you to skip revision one and go with either this board here. This is the almost latest version with DHT11 sensor for the temperature and humidity, or go with this newer board that looks like it's missing parts, but actually 
this part here, the HT11, which is not so precise, was replaced by the BME280 sensor. And that one includes not just temperature and humidity for the air, but also pressure sensor. More data. But on the other hand, if you do not need pressure sensor in each of your plants, you can just skip and go for the a bit cheaper version that will be sufficient. But the problem with them is that these are ESP32 boards. And ESP, while it can work on batteries, yeah, it can be a bit of issue. If you search the internet, you will find two versions of the firmware. One is Arduino, which is better in terms of battery life. And then we have ESP32 version or ESP Home version that also works on the batteries, but not that good. But if you want to go for simplicity, I would suggest one of the following sensors. This one is the sensor I'm also using. I have two of them. The problem with this one is that it is a bit bulky. The good thing about this one is that it is IP67 rated. Unlike the Hygro, which is IP0 rated. You look it wrong and it will die. The second issue about this one is that since it is Tuya, we all know that Tuya doesn't like to provide the updates for the firmware. There are on the market a couple of versions of these boards, some with older firmware, some with newer firmware, and even if you buy from the same seller, like me or any other seller, you still are not sure what you will actually get. There is a way to update the firmware, but I wasn't able to find the firmware for it to update it. The issue can be battery life. For both of the sensors, at first I thought that I had an older version, but it seems that after it depleted batteries for the first time, after that it started working normally, and now batteries last, I think, 3, 4, 5, 6 months, I don't know since I still haven't replaced them. But remember, this is a bulky sensor, it's really bulky, and you have to have big plants and big pots to hide them there. The third one is the device that a lot of people are using. This is this Mi Flora sensor from Mia or Xiaomi. But you also have to be careful here because there are a couple of alternatives. For example, this black one is not smart device. It will just blink a light if there is a problem with the plant. Then we have the white one and the green one, which are smart ones but they work over Bluetooth. And no, this is not a problem because Home Assistant already has internal Home Assistant integration for those plant sensors. You just need to provide the Bluetooth proxy. And Bluetooth proxy is just any Bluetooth enabled ESP device that you put ESP Home firmware on it with the Bluetooth proxy functionality turned on. It can be done really in a matter of seconds. If not, then just a couple of minutes. But there is also one additional version of this sensor because, yeah, we want complexity in the same box. And that is this pink one here. This one works with the Tuya app. I actually have no idea, zero clue, what protocol it is using. If it is still using the BLE type of the connection, you could potentially have this working inside Home Assistant. But I haven't tested and I also didn't find anything on the internet, although I didn't search that much. What is the difference between the Bluetooth version, original version, that works with the Akara software, and the one that is working with the Tuya software or Smart Life? Also note that this is a very good sensor. Unlike the previous Zigbee one that only has, if I'm not mistaken, the temperature for the air, not actual soil, and also the soil moisture sensor, this one is packed with sensor. It has temperature, humidity, soil, conductivity, and also illuminance sensor. So this one is perfect for the plant monitoring integration, no matter if it's internal or the one that I'm really recommending, the HEX version. What I would really like to see is somebody making commercially sensors working on the Zigbee protocol because it would extend the battery life a lot and would not require Bluetooth proxies, especially if you want to have a lot of sensors that has the functionality that this one has. The closest one I found is something that unfortunately you have to DIY or order PCBs plus assembly from a company like PCBWay. And this is this sensor here. I will be posting link also to this website, but please note the site is in Russian because yes, it's a, a Russian project. These are the DIY Zigbee soil sensors. This is the version 3. 
that you can order either as a PCB or ready-made from a company that does production of PCBs plus assembly, but you also have to print the case, cut the acrylics, buy a separate battery holder and glue everything together. Also, it is not as feature-packed as the other sensor that I showed just a second ago, MIA 1, but it is good enough. And now it's time to hear your thoughts. But hold your thoughts and before you write a comment down, don't forget to click the like on the video because it will tell YouTube that this video was good and that more people should see it. Back to your thoughts. What do you think about the plant monitoring hex integration? But also what are you using as plant monitoring sensors? Did you maybe DIY sensors? Because that's also an option. I don't want to see cables. And that's why I either prefer the DIY project where everything is in one device, including the battery, or to buy some products that are off the shelf, like that Zigbee one that I've shown you, or the one that I will be buying, and that is the BLE version. If you do find some other project that you can purchase ready-made product, yeah, I would be interested, so drop me a line down in the comment section below. But before I wrap up the video, I want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared and commented on my videos. And by the way, watch, like, share and comment my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time when I return from a vacation. Bye bye and have fun!